a summary of where we finished off um, um, on Monday. And this chapter, as I said, deals with um, decisions that you have to take about a product and, and developing new products. And we finished off with the example of products that um, actually um, originated um, um, because of um, certain inventions. In other words, there was a vehicle invented, and as a result of that, there's all that spin-offs that come with that, that um, like a trailer, for instance. And then I asked you to um, to prepare some examples for me. I've prepared some examples um, on the next screen myself, but um, let's get Dylan on uh, hooked up on as well, just to make sure and just to clarify it for everybody. Complementary goods um, and the examples we're going to do now. Basically, it's products and services that sell very well together, or it's products that um, 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 are highly um, um, correlated um, when it comes to demand. In other words, it's like a cell phone accessories, for instance. Um, let's get Brady on as well. Welcome, Brady. Um, it's where you, for instance, you buy a cell phone, but because you have a cell phone, you also now need some of the accessories, like maybe a screen cover or maybe. Um, some kind of cover to protect it when it falls and stuff like that. So there's all additional accessories that is um, um, that uh, has become products now as a result of um, the invention of the cell phone in the first place. Anybody wants to go first, um, um, give it a go. Um, I've, I've got four examples myself that I'll share with you, but uh, I'd like to hear from you. Anything that you can think of, um, like um, um, almost as like chalk and cheese. Now, uh, chalk and cheese, the two doesn't really go together for me, but um, I know that's the expression. Products that you think that complement each other well. Like, for instance, um, if you go to a coffee shop, a coffee shop um, is per se not just a coffee shop. Um, you, very few people go to a coffee shop just to have coffee. They always have something with it, a little sandwich or uh, a cake or um, or something, um, or a muffin or a scone or whatever. So there's always, those are all complementary things. And then, and, and then we've also seen that, for instance, in, um, for instance, in bookstores, um, the big bookstores, for instance, they um, enjoy, um, they have great little areas where people can actually just sit and read um, um, the books before they purchase it. Um, you don't want to stand and just walk through the aisles of books. Um, there's a nice little lounge area where you can sit in comfortable seats. And then um, they brought in some um, um, coffee machines and stuff there as well. So the whole experience of visiting a bookshop is totally different. It's all it makes you, makes you feel at home. Because what do you often do when you sit down and read? Either if it's the paper or, an, or, or the, the, the next um, 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 novel that came out or a book that you bought, um, you always have something to drink. But that. Just that smell of coffee sort of relaxes you and then adds to the um, to, um, to the um, atmosphere. Um, and it's not just your old a bookstore, which is which is the only in, in the past the bookstore was only um, um, the difference between a bookstore and a library was the fact that um, at the bookstore at least you could buy the books, but in the library you can't. Um, anybody any examples of, of complementary goods like that? That um, because of the one product. Um, the other one became a necessity as well. Um, I've got, as I said, some ideas, but uh, and, and examples I'm to share with you. But I'm not going to put that up on the screen. I'd like to hear from you guys first. Anybody? Can anybody give me an example of of, of com complementary goods? There's no right and wrong answer, people. I mean, this is not. I just want to know what you think and how you think, because then it means that um, you actually know how to apply um, it to this particular concept. So, um, yeah. Just have a look. Have a look at the comments, Yaku. Um, I'm going to open. I'm going to open my what's his name now. It says here from Teresa uh, with. Yes, the Wi-Fi. Of, Wi yeah. of course, yes. I mean, and that, that's one of those things. I mean, initially, when when um, initially laptops, because they have their own keyboard um, um, and and sort of built-in um, mouse to use. Um, now people have wireless mouses that they can actually insert as well. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, my my son is very much into vinyls. The youngest one, and I went some vinyl shopping the other day, and it's ironic how. He got three CDs for free with the vinyl that he bought because there's no there's no market for CDs anymore. Um, artists don't record music on CDs anymore. 
um, or if they do, um, it's not done through a production house, they do it themselves. Um, and it's purely for to hang out at the shows that they do. But then on the other hand, <laughs> where do people play it? Because they, there's, there's no vehicles come out with CD players anymore, for instance. Um, and I think when, when then we realized that the, the evolution that has happened in the 70s and 80s, we were all playing our vinyls. That's what that's how we listen to our music. And then all of a sudden, um, the industry got scared because um, CDs came in. And that was the buzzword. And then CDs were replaced by <laughs> all the online platforms and they disappeared completely. So you get in your car now and you stick your, um, um, your, your, your phone in to a, um, to a port and then you listen to music or you don't listen to the radio, for instance. But despite that, Vinyls have returned because vinyls couldn't be copied. You can't play vinyl in a car. You can only play it on your on your record player. Um, but yes, that's a very good example, um, uh, Teresa. Um, let me share one, and then we we'll go one for you, one for me, kind of thing. Um, the one I want to share is the following: hot dogs. It's not a hot dog without a hot dog bun. Okay, otherwise it's just a sausage, right? Something very familiar to that to most of us. I try to um, to select some 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 ideas um, of complementary products that I think we can all relate to. Um, yeah, the one without the other doesn't go. Um, just the bun itself is just a is, is just a hot dog roll. It's just a roll and it's nothing. I mean, the sausage itself is just a sausage. Two combined becomes a hot dog. Right. Anybody else? Any ideas? A mouse doesn't work without a computer. You're quite right, <laughs> Duncan. It's it's one of those things that um, uh, you, you, you can't buy a mouse. Okay, right. And then what do you do with the mouse? It needs support to be inserted so you can actually use it. Um, yeah, I've I've replaced my because I'm streaming my um, my um, I've got a big screen TV, but I'm actually um, I'm streaming everything I want uh, and I'm watching all the shows um, uh, in that match. So my remote for my TV. Is, has now been replaced by my wireless mouse because uh, that's how I navigate myself across the screen and, and change channels. And um, yeah, it's it's amazing how things change. Uh, let's share another one from from my side. Um, movies, pencils, and notebooks. Yes, a notebook without a pencil is just a notebook. A pencil without something to write on is um, just a pencil, um, and there's not too much you could do with that. Um, they do go together. Yes, thank you, Tiffany. Um, movies, movies and popcorn. Hey, believe it or not, popcorn itself is not. It's almost like you make yourself popcorn at home, and then okay, right now I need to watch a movie because I mean, what do I else? It almost as if that that's the image that pops up when you when you um, when you um, when you switch on a movie or sit down to watch a movie. And similarly, when you go to the movies. When you actually go to Stack Unicode to sit down, it's very expensive nowadays, but I mean, I, I, I still love the movies. I mean, there are some movies that unfortunately you just have to watch on the big screen um, or in IMAX and, and you're prepared to pay that back. When you sit down, uh, hardly ever do we not have popcorn um, uh, with, our, with our, that's a sort of part of the entertainment package. Shoes and insoles, phones and chargers, cars and petrol, tennis balls and tennis racket. Yeah, tennis racket without tennis balls, I suppose, is probably just something that you cannot chase the air with. Um, but what do you really do? Yeah, um, tennis ball itself, I think my Jack Russell would, um, would, would, would be of the opposite opinion. The tennis ball itself, he doesn't need a racket to play. He just needs the tennis ball. But then you can't play tennis without both of those. Um, good examples. Thanks, guys. Right, let me show you a third one. Um, a razor and the blades. <laughs> Without the blades, I mean, you can't shave. You need, um, it's going to be very difficult if you just have the blades, but you don't have the, the razor itself. Um, the, yes? Compassion in a bed. <laughs> yeah. Especially in winter, yes. Example in class is, uh, is, is um, a bed and, and, and the blanket. Um, Compassion in a partner. Even better. <laughs> then you don't need to be. <laughs> uh, guys, frozen food and fridges. Yes. Oh, which you keep. 
I realized that when I was still very much into camping when, uh, when my sons were younger. Um, yes, that's that's one of the first things that you buy. You buy the caravan, um, you, and you know what? You don't even need a tent initially. Uh, you just need that. Um, but most importantly is a cooler box. You need to have something to keep. Well, most um, caravans nowadays actually um, have the fitted fridges and everything. Um, it's, it's almost like a house on wheels, but... Um, yeah, that's something that's really important. How do you keep your um, food frozen if you don't have a fridge? Mobile phones and SIM cards. I suppose without a SIM card, no use. Mo mobile phone be of no use. Maybe chuck it at somebody that you're mad at. Toothbrushes and toothpaste. Thanks, Hermina. Yeah, uh, we're getting some great examples here. Thank you. Um, last one I'm going to share, and then we move on with the rest of the chapter, would be, what's that? That's a pot of curry. Now, curry without rice is not... It's not a meal. You need to have both of them, right? Okay. Um, my apologies if I've actually um, made you hungry this early in the morning. But then on the other hand, I know it's 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 not even ten o'clock in the morning yet, and I know even if you had um, a breakfast that you you are still hungry because students graze all the time. Um, but yeah, um, great examples um, of of complementary goods, um, and I think we all know that. Um, it's almost a chicken. We, we we left the class the other day with um, curry without rice. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly. I know exactly how he feels. That's my expression too. Um, it's yeah, <laughs> good one. You've been spending some time with um, with our friends down in the Cape, uh, Andre. Or just got access to all the <laughs> access to all the websites that he um, that he visits very frequently to share all these nice images with us. Right, um, let's go to uh, the next slide, which is um, the product life cycle. We know that both, and as, as I said, in in, in this case, um, I'm just going to close my my chat screen so I can have a bigger screen to to, to share with you um, for me to see. Um, both industry and um, the products that uh, is and, and services that sold within a particular industry go through different life cycles. The industry is life cycle is, is a bit of a longer one. Products go, go through shorter life cycles because they are usually upgraded, and we'll see when we have an illustration um, of the product life cycle. Um, there is one that Michael Porter has um, um, illustrated on page 155 for you, which is the industry life cycle. And if you page over to page 157, then you'll probably see the following on your screen, which is the image of um, a product life cycle that goes through the following stages um, of introduction, growth, maturity. And then when it gets to that point of maturity where it's settled in the market, um, and now either the sales start dropping. Um, sorry, I just want to get Dylan on um, um, lockdown as well. If the sales start dropping, if there's a decline, they can, two things can happen. Usually at that point where um, we've reached maturity, there were the two lines split. Um, in the later maturity um, stage of the product life cycle, they either have to, you either have to completely dish the product and take it off the market, if you see that your sales um, are, are stabilizing, but it might, uh, and it has probably slightly even started dropping, and then you have a choice to either improve the product. Um, often happens with cell phones. We know that um, when the, the latest iPhone is out, the next one has already been um, has already been designed. It's just not been um, um, it's not been um, placed on on the market yet. So you have that choice when there is um, when when you have to um, um, when you have reached that point of maturity um, to either renew the product um, through maybe upgrading some of the features or alternatively you decide you know what um, it's not worth it let's just replace the product completely. Um, the different phases. At this point in your first year um, in marketing, we are probably not going to expect you to um, necessarily explain every single phase of the product life cycle for me in detail. Um, but it actually is, um, um, it's, it's um, or each of, or any of those, um, um, uh, or all of those um, 
uh, stages. But um, it's important to know the, um, the stages. It's quite simple. Introduction stage is when a new product has been developed and is actually now um, put in the market. Okay, it's introduced to the market. It's something new. Uh, people are usually um, have have um, a varying uh, a variety of reactions. Some people are excited. Oh, that's something new. I need to have it. But then we've also seen from chapter three um, on how consumers behave that some consumers are slightly reluctant and they'll wait till the majority of the people have tried it and it's actually um, it, it actually has no side effects. Um, it's it's. To be honest with you, it's almost like how I feel about the vaccination for the for the, for the um, coronavirus. Um, I'm I'm still 50-50, and or should I get it or, or, or not? And, um, and I think I'll probably I'm, I'm probably one of those that okay, let's let's vaccinate a couple of million of people, and we see there's no real side effects, and it actually um, has a huge benefit. Then you'll probably um, um, I'll, I'll probably um, do it much easier. Similarly, with a new product that's introduced to the market, initially there's various reactions from people, and then um, the, the sales started increasing. That's where you start growing because, and that's if the product was successful. Then it starts growing, and the sales go in, in that second um, in that second phase, the growth phase. The sales really go through the roof. Um, so that's why it takes that um, that, that steep upward um, curve. And then it sort of stabilizes in the market. That's your maturity market. Then probably by this point, um, other competitors have also entered the market um, because they they realized that this new product that, or this new innovation that came in that was introduced uh, has, 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 has really taken off and they want to bring out something similar. And that's usually where um, more, uh, as a result of more competitors entering um, um, the, the, the latter part of the growth phase, uh, which would be the next company's introduction phase of their product, um, then yours would reach some form of maturity, um, and then you're confronted with the two choices um, that um, the fourth st stage offer you, that is renewal or to completely um, remove your product from the market. Anybody clear on this? It's quite self-explanatory. Um, know the different stages, know the four stages of this product life cycle. Um, and they say five, but it's four that actually, have, um, you can actually say four A and B, um, the client being um, the B and um, renewal being A in, in this fourth stage. Any questions on the product life cycle? Good. There's some reasons why new products are developed. Um, it could be because, um, and very often it is because there's a change in the need of the consumers. Consumers change their needs um, because um, maybe they they themselves have moved to a different phase in their life cycle, um, the consumer life cycle. Um, maybe they got married, the needs changed. I know, for instance, that was, um, I was very, very happy when, when it was just me and my wife in the Labrador when, um, um, and, and Bantambaki um, for us was, was sufficient to go everywhere because you can chuck your cricket gear at the back and all your surfing stuff and you can even go camping at the back. As a matter of fact, I did my first comrades um, um, by just, um, you know, I slept at the back of my bucky, um, inside the bucky the evening before the race and um, obviously the um, when I completed it, I treated myself and it was a bit more luxurious than that. But then obviously the family, uh, my wife um, um, fell pregnant and um, uh, where, do you, where, do you put, where do you put your child? Where do you put your, your car, your, your baby seat? You can't put it in the back of the, of, of the bucky and there's also no room in the cabin of the bucky. So I mean, my needs changed at that stage and as a result of that, um, I needed to change to a new, I needed to change the product I was driving at that stage to a new product, which basically um, became a family vehicle, a sedan for that matter. Um, products become completely obsolete, in other words, nobody buys it anymore. It's like the C example that we um, have just, um, that I've just discussed with you. You also want to remain competitive, and that's usually where um, not necessarily a new product, is com complete new product is developed, but where you improve some of the features to make it um, um, competitive. Or maybe your business brings out a complete new product because um, um, you want to remain competitive in, in the market. Um, replacing declining products, we've addressed that. And then obviously because you grow and you want to become more profitable and you add more products to your to the options that um, that you already offer the consumers, right? Um, 
the new product development process, you'll see that on page 158, we have that particular um, um, illustration in your, in, your, in your textbooks as well. Uh, firstly, we have, we're going to be breezing through each of these um, phases individually um, from the next slide onwards. But basically, you need to identify new ideas. Where do I get new ideas? We need to generate new ideas. Then we have to screen our ideas um, and we need to toss the ones that's actually not um, likely to succeed. Um, then you the, start spending more time on developing the concept itself and even a bit of testing before you actually um, do a business analysis to see, all okay, right, so what do I want to achieve? My sales volumes and my profits um, for this particular product. Um, and you follow that up by doing some market testing and specific selected um, um, segments in the market that you target to, to, to um, sample test your um, product's potential success. Make any technical um, adjustments um, if necessary. Um, you follow that by um, starting to market the product. Uh, you start with commercialization and then finally um, the pricing and put the product in the market. That's the steps. We're going to look at each of these steps individually now. Right. First step. To have a good idea, somebody said to me once, you need to start by having many ideas. I think it's it's been documented that um, the inventors of um, the light bulb or the inventor of the light bulb. Can anybody tell me who that was? Who's that little yellow man there? No, he didn't invent the world. Who invented the light bulb? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Are you all Googling now? They, they're all Googling now. <laughs> they're all Googling now. <laughs> oh, my goodness, people. What did Thomas Edison invent? It's not Alexander Bell, because that rings a different bell. He invented the telephone. Thomas Edison was the person who invented the light bulb. Apparently, he attempted more than 100 times to perfect it. Okay, so basically, if you want to have an idea that works, not every idea is going to work, but you need to have not just one idea. I can remember when I, mean, I was still at Vast in, um, and, and obviously the entrepreneurial spirit was still very strong. Um, me and a couple of friends came up with an idea and we started, we put a lot of effort into it. Um, and then eventually when we went to see the people who would um, can approve it, um, they said, no, it's not going to work. Um, and they basically took the idea. Um, and then what we were still idea? stupid students because what we... What was um, the idea? Um, can you share it with us? Was it a secret? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd much rather not. Um, <laughs> okay. there, there are too many people who are still alive who might... Um, not that they are going to. This is not published on YouTube, so but um, you never know. No, I was I was very much into sports, and obviously I was I was quite keen on I was quite keen on um, making a full time occupation out of it um, off the playing field because I wasn't that talented. Um, and um, but I also um, very from very early on in my life I wanted to become an architect. So what I did is um, I designed a, a model of a sports stadium. Um, a cricket stadium, um, um, and I also that was after I returned from from the UK. I've I've met a few people um, who uh, from the east who um, were prepared to invest some money in a project like that. Um, and when we went to the person who needed to approve this, um, yeah, unfortunately the idea was um, shot down and said that it could be done. In, um, there are greater needs. Why build one stadium if you can actually build 10 different fields with the same money? Um, and then lo and behold, yeah, six months later, that same stadium appeared somewhere else. As a matter of fact, even the same engineers were involved. But anyway, that's how you learn your lessons because you're still in the learning process. But um, yeah, uh, lesson learned there was, um, apart from the life lesson of, of not trusting anybody in business, um, but to go with your gut, but also to not invest too much time like we have in one project in one idea which was a great idea because it wouldn't have happened and by the way that that stadium is still um 
is still in um, in use in, in in our country. Um, did you but, did you try and take them on? You know what? You're you, you're you're a student, and and, and as I say, oh, no. oh. yeah, uh, you're a student with a lot of ideas and and, and a lot of um, for fire in your belly. But at the end of the day, then you don't necessarily have always have all the the know how. To, to um, and these big guys. And the time oh. and the money. <laughs> That's the other thing. Man. Sometimes you know when to pick your or which fights to pick. But anyway, um, uh, long story short is we we learned that to, to invest a lot of effort into this one particular um, idea, and then it it shut down. Uh, regardless of, of the end result, um, if it was turned down uh, and nothing else happened, it would just have been another idea. And then we realized, um, and we learned quickly from that. Um, and the next thing we um, experimented with was. Um, was um <laughs> was um <laughs> entering the poultry market we got a little chickens because i was living on a on a an, um renting a place um outside of stalamosh on a farm and we got a couple of chickens raised a couple of chickens went to the pet shop bought some chickens and the chickens eventually hatched um some eggs and then we started um selling the live chickens because these are very um um it's, it's a very popular Item among certain um, cultures in our in our population, um, and we definitely had a, a roaring business. But um, then again, it became a very time-consuming thing. So at the end of the day, if you want to, if you want to have a good idea that works, um, you need to. And, and you can ask Elon Musk as well. And these guys have been very successful. They've they've probably how many times did these rocket not blow up, and how many times did it even not even leave the um, the science lab, and it just remained an idea, um, and and how many ideas actually only realize um, a number of years into the future? Uh, it's almost as if you say, okay, all right, that's never going to work. You leave it and you put it in the cupboard somewhere, and and then a number of years later on you dust it off again, you, and and maybe sometimes the timing is not right, but the long and the short of it is. For you to have a good idea that works, that can develop into a product that can that can be sold and that will grow and um, and, and and be sustainable, and you need to have many ideas, and you need to work on a number of ideas at the same time. On the screen, you'll find that there are some idea, some uh, sources that are um, uh, listed that you can um, where new ideas come from, and businesses, and especially the successful businesses, have a research and development department that does that all the time. Um, Google, for instance, Google have, have people who work for them and all they have to do is just generate ideas. Uh, it doesn't have to be good ideas. They just have to generate ideas. Out of that, some good idea will come. So the first step is to get many ideas. Right. The next thing is obviously to work through all these ideas and exclude the ones that's really unrealistic and is probably not going to um, materialize. Um, mainly for the fact that you do not have the resources to do it or that you actually don't want to waste some of the resources that you do have on it unnecessarily. Um, resources for me when I was growing up and going through this entrepreneurial phase of my life um, was mostly time and money. Um, and I think that's probably the issue with most people um, um, who have um, good ideas. They don't have the time, which is a resource. And then I have the money, which is another resource to actually um, um, to spend on developing this idea into something um, tangible. Um, there are also on the screen are some questions that you can ask yourself that will maybe help you um, to um, through this process of, of of eliminating the the unrealistic and probably non profitable um, ideas. Uh, before you advance to the next stage where you have now decided on an idea and this is where you start um, refining the, the concept, you develop the concept and if it's for instance, we take the process, I mean I've got an image on the screen there of, of um, a vehicle, um, it goes through that stage where a sort of a prototype is designed on paper, like it's like, it's like building a house. We get the architect in and he draws up the plans um, based on the specific needs of the client. This is that phase where that new product is, 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 um, in, is being developed, but um, still just um, um, as, a, as a design and not an actual physical um, tangible product. Um, the next step would be 
to do some of a business analysis because you've got the idea, the concept has been refined, you know exactly what needs to be done to actually for it to become a prototype that you can that you can try. Um, and um, you will now have to decide, um, as I pointed out earlier in the chapter, um, you will have to decide um, how much profit you want to make. Um, and and how, um, how many of this particular product do you need to actually manufacture to, um, to be successful? Firstly, just to break even and then to be profitable. These are all things that, you, that, that, that form part of this particular phase where you do a business analysis. It needs to tie in with your business objectives. Uh, it can't just be a, a, a very nice idea. It needs to be. It needs to be profitable. And profitable. And it needs to fit into the total um, all-over um, strategy and objective of of your company. Otherwise, it's just it will just be wasting money and time. Right. Now the next phase, the fifth stage, is where you actually now um, design a prototype. Um, in this case, the example that I've used also is, um, or, or the image in the bottom of the screen is, is Tesla's flying car. Um, we usually um, we talk about um, 0 to 100 in how many seconds? Um, there they're talking of 0 to 60 inches <laughs> in one second, because um, obviously it's a, it's it's um, it's still very much something that um, that Tesla um, Elon Musk um, is is very um, is very adamant about that they will be able to um, to get something off the ground literally um, and physically. You also, at, in this particular phase, you start testing. You you select a particular um, 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 sample group of the market, and you maybe um, provide them an opportunity to test it and give you feedback. Um, I know when I was doing a lot of marketing um, um, for my previous college many many years ago, it's a stretch um, which we all hated to drive. Um, and we usually, when we did the Northern Cape um, from Springbok, um, you take a you take a, a right inland um, to Uppington. Now that's about a jeez, I can't even remember. It's about 300, 350 kilometers. But there's a certain stretch uh, about 50 k's outside of Springbok on the way to Uppington um, that is flat. And I think if it's not the end of the earth, you can see the end of the earth. Um, and and we often on that road had um, 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 fleets of vehicles. You can see it's test vehicles. They test them on that road because there's not a lot of traffic on that road. Uh, it's also a long straight stretch. Um, and that's um, many, many times we have test vehicles. And obviously there, there, are, there are people who, um, who specifically uh, fulfill that function. I know of a friend, uh, a friend of mine actually, he does that for a living. Um, He's always been um, a petrol hit. Um, he loves vehicles, and he he writes for um, for, for magazines, um, vehicle magazines, car magazines, and they use him to um, every single time that um, that new um, new um, models are brought into our country. Um, he's given the opportunity to test drive it, um, write his opinion on it, and he's also then. Um, uh, invited to the launch of that particular product um, or, or that new model. Um, what a life. I, I think he probably, I'm not sure if he's ever owned a vehicle in his life because that's all he's been doing. Um, and um, yeah, it's if, if that floats your boat, it's, it's amazing. But those would be people, there are people like that um, who would do it as a profession, who just test these um, um, products for you. Um, I know that's there are some other products that um, I would prefer to rather sample, um, but uh, let's not um, embroider on that topic at the moment. Right. Um, the next step would be to obviously make any kind of changes that's necessary um, based on the feedback that you got from your um, from your um, testing that was done, um, and now you start putting your operational um, um, requirements in place as well. Um, because you need to know exactly what all those raw materials to order to, in, uh, to ensure that you can make the quantity of the product that you have set as a goal in step number five when you did the business analysis. Um, you will start with production um, and, and you'll start building an inventory because um, there's no point in going to the next step where you are going to commercialize it 
um, and you're going to start marketing it out there and, and, and advertising it um, and tell the marketplace about it. And then all of a sudden, um, sorry, so you need the waiting period six months. Um, very popular um, and something that springs to mind because, I mean, while I was waiting for the, for the previous finish, I was looking um, from the third floor out onto um, basically the towards um, Table Mountain over that um, stretch um, of, of residential area and, and factories. And, and, and I realized again that, um, that um, sorry, it's just a, I've got a, um, a frog in my throat and I um, need to just quickly take a sip of water if you don't mind. Oops, lazy. Now would now be a good time for anyone to ask a question if, while I'm trying to catch my breath um, and get rid of this irritation in my throat. Any questions? I haven't opened my, let me open my um, conversation box and see if there's anybody sharing anything. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we can be friends with that friend, yeah? imagine that. Imagine that. Okay. Um, Nothing else at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just uh, regroup there. Um, yeah, as I said in the previous phase, what we are going to do is we need to um, to build uh, inventory. And as I was saying, looking out over over that stretch, um, I saw a lot of dealerships. This is an area that there's a lot of dealerships um, that you, that's very visible from from high up where, where I was standing. Um, and you are not going to, for instance, launch the new. Um, VW Golf uh, and ask people to uh, visit your dealership because they can do test drives and when you get there there's no there's no vehicle to drive it was just a way of getting people there um, so when new products are developed you have to ensure that you build an inventory and you have to make sure that before you start advertising um, um, and, and, and inviting people and sharing that information with um, with the marketplace that you actually have um, items in stock um, there are many, many examples of businesses that um, uh, have fallen into that trap of not manufacturing enough, but it is not an exact science. It is very, it's much easier nowadays with all the technology that we have to do more accurately through all the different um, models um, 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 that's available and um, to determine more accurately what uh, amount of inventory you need to build up, but um, it's it's expensive. People are not going to manufacture a thousand um, units of a particular product if they are not sure that they will be able to sell all those thousands. Um, um, and therefore, they very often, um, especially new businesses, um, often don't carry enough stock initially. Um, but just make sure that you don't overpromise when it comes to to this, because a wonderful idea and a great product. Um, can quickly disappear from the minds of a consumer if um, they have to wait too long to get that product. There are some products where people are prepared to wait for um, for an extended period, but um, there are not too many of those. Right. Um, an example that's in your textbooks um, is um, the house brands of Pick and Pay. Um, those pick and pay brands, there's nothing, the milk, um, if I can just look at that particular image um, in, on the screen, um, it looks the same as anybody else. I'm pretty sure that the majority of the milks are exactly the same. Um, you still have full cream milk, you still have um, fat-free milk and stuff like that. Um, this is a particular brand that they um, they've just decided that they are going to um, obtain the milk from um, a dairy farmer themselves and bottle it because they have the capacity to do that um, and then bring out a product that is slightly cheaper because they've cut it a few, um, a few people in the distribution process. Um, some of the intermediaries in the distribution process have, have been replaced um, or the, the company have replaced them by fulfilling that function themselves, um, it's it's a it's a common phenomenon nowadays, and I think especially when when businesses um, are suffering as a result of um, global recession, economic recession, they look at different ways of doing things, and one 
is to actually um, cut in your expenses. And if there are some of the functions that you can fulfill yourself um, by just doing a few changes and uh, making a few changes within the structures of your business, um, then people would rather do that or then businesses rather do that. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but um, just to up to this point, um, capture the essence of what we have done in this chapter, um, and the, which is basically products and new product design and the life cycles products go through and why new products are added. Um, you'll find among those three pages um, in your textbook um, in the form of the example, the, the, the house brand example of Pick and Pay. Um, I'm not going to embroider on that. I'm much rather going to go to the next section of the work, which deals with the different distribution um, channels or dis different forms of distribution. Um, the um, distribution is often, um, not to be confused, um, another word that is used um, in the market itself. It's that it's called marketing channels. Some refer to it as distribution channels. If uh, for some reason it pops up in, in a test or an exam, um, when we refer to a marketing channel. Um, we also refer to it as a distribution channel. For the sake of um, not confusing people, um, I tend to use it um, as the marketing distribution channel. Um, I'm use both words, so it, it, then it makes sense and people um, can recognize what, what we want from them. But basically, um, all your supply chain activities um, is either found upstream or downstream. Now, basically, if you um, image um, that you can hold yourself, I can't get up now because of my knee surgery, but uh, last year, basically what I did is I, I, I stood on top of one of the chairs in front of the class and I said to people, everything upstream that has to flow from the ground, like the raw materials that you find there and the equipment that you need to get the raw materials out of the ground and to get it into a truck, to get it to you where you are going to manufacture it, is upstream activities. Um, the supplies of the raw material, the manufacturing itself, um, getting it from the ground up to where I'm standing on the chair um, is the upstream activities. The downstream activities is everything that flows down to, on my other side to the ground again, which is all the intermediaries that are involved in distributing the product, getting it from me where I'm manufacturing, where I'm standing on the chair as the manufacturer. That's why in the center of the screen it says operations or manufacturer. That's 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 the person, that's me standing on the chair. The downstream activities we've dealt with, the up, um, upstream activities we've dealt with, the downstream activities, just the other side, and that's how we get the products to the consumer, which is on screen in the image right on the right hand side that's what all these activities is about getting it from the ground to the manufacturer and to the consumer and there's a lot of intermediaries as they refer to that are involved in this um, that's basically the whole um, supply chain um, and all the activities involved if you can surmise it in one particular diagram that's straightforward and simple um, and easy to understand and it's definitely not something that you've heard or seen for the first time if you had business studies at school right we have to dis um, um, however distinguish between a few um, between some terminology um, that sometimes can be confusing when we refer to um, a channel basically um, is 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 everybody and, and all the um, activities that's involved in getting the product from the manufacturer to the consumer. Where channel management is the actual flow of the products and services through the channel and everybody that, um, and it includes the buying and the selling component as well. Um, it's the whole process of it's managing that entire process um, is referred to as, as channel management. Um, the examples there that I've used um, could be anything in, from, from supermarkets to wholesalers. Um, they are often involved in the process as a manufacturer, but then they've also replaced some of the channel management. They've taken some of the fun, uh, some of the activities in the in the channel in the um, uh, service um, um, 
chain in that channel they've taken um, and uh, away from um, suppliers of intermediaries if you want to call it that and they have um, they're doing that themselves now in other words um, like the example we've used previously of, of um, the supermarkets having their own delivery trucks and having warehouses where they store all the products and they distribute it themselves from there. So they've added that function and it's much cheaper than actually paying somebody else and you have more control over it because uh, at some point if your intermediaries who are responsible for distributing your products from um, from the factory to um, to the cons uh, to the to the outlets where it's sold, um, the retail outlet. Um, if 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 they become too powerful and they realize that they can actually ask any price they want, um, then I know that most of the manufacturers will replace them. Uh, that's often what happens, um, and that's also why many of these um, businesses. Um, especially your big um, supermarket retailers um, groups have decided to rather do that themselves because they can control it. So if the delivery is late at a particular supermarket um, retail outlet, uh, they can only blame themselves because it's their own process. Um, they've taken on that activity themselves and they are responsible for that activity themselves. But also they know that they can fix it themselves because it's their trucks and it's their drivers. Right. Some of these activities in the distribution channel add some value and they can have, add different value to different, um, to different businesses. Uh, you can read through that list again. I'm not going to give you a, a, a essay question to say, right, explain um, or at least name and explain um, five value activities in the, of a distribution channel or within a distribution channel. But I think it's rather self-explanatory um that the different values that it offers is that depending on where you find yourself in the distribution channel you can either be responsible for the storage you're responsible for um, the buying and selling you're responsible for the transportation of the of the items um, maybe you are just responsible to provide the consumer with information um, on where to get the product and and um, if it's um, something that they need to maybe assemble, how to use it, um, give them the proper instructions. So they are all um, different roles that's fulfilled by the different intermediaries. And as a result of each of these roles, they um, add different forms of value to the whole distribution channel. Just be um, aware of that um, and that there are different um, um, value activities but uh, as I said um, in the context of the of the course itself it's not that important to understand it in greater detail right now we have different types of distribution channels on page 170 in your um, textbook you will find that illustration which basically summarizes the three different types of activities that you can find that your channel intermediaries fulfill. You have your transaction, logistical and facilitating activities. Now transaction um, um, activities refer to specifically the buyers and the sellers of the products. They are the ones taking the risk. They are the ones who has to keep stock um, and make sure that that, um, that they have sufficient inventory um, for, um, for the demand in, in, in the market. Your logistical activities are the um, intermediaries in the channel that's responsible for mostly the transportation of the products from um, to um, um, between storage and um, it can include storage as well, but it's usually between um, storage and um, the wholesalers and retailers. Um, your facilitating activities is um, those um, intermediaries providing information to the customer and then also ensuring that a uniform quality standard of product is is um, is um, received by the customer okay basically um, if um, 
you're unsure where and what in your textbook, um, this particular illustration of the activities in the distribution channel is just a it's just an illustration of what you've seen on the previous slide. Okay. More importantly for me, however, in this section on distribution is that we need to look at the different types of, cons um, um, of, of distribution channels. When the distribution um, of tangible goods, products that you can touch and feel um, and taste, when they are distributed, they can be, we can find three different um, types of channels. It could be directly from the manufacturer to the customer. It could be that there is a retailer involved who gets it straight from the manufacturer and then sells it to the consumer. Or we can get our wholesalers involved as well in our particular channel. So those are examples, three different examples of channels that is used and that is popular for distributing um, tangible products. Um, Anybody want to take a guess at, um, at, at, at um, and provide me examples with um, about um, any of these in particular? What would be an example of a manufacturer straight to the consumer? Okay, let me kick off and then you can do the rest. Let me start the thought, the thought process. A distribution channel that runs manufacturers straight to the consumer. Think for instance a farmer who has a farm stall on his farm. Those are his products. It comes from his land. There's nobody else involved. He um, um, sells the products that he has produced on his farm through his farm stall. Yes, he might also supply directly to the supermarket, which is the second one in town, but he has an option um, to sell it for people traveling past and who um, enjoys visiting farm stalls and who actually thinks it, it might be fresher <laughs> because it's straight from the farmer, basically. But that would be an example of a manufacturer straight to a consumer. That same scenario would be the farmer as manufacturer um, selling it directly to the supermarket um, um, who either comes to his farm and, and, and um, collects the products that they want to, or if he ha um, um, maybe has uh, as a truck, he goes into town and he delivers straight to them. They put it on the shelves, they sell it to the consumer. Okay. In the bigger change, we have wholesalers. Uh, Macro, for instance, is a wholesaler. Macro don't manufacture any of those products that they sell. Okay. They don't. They keep it on behalf of all those suppliers as a wholesaler. Everybody understand that? All good? Thumbs up? Nobody? No reaction? Oh, we're battling. Thank you very much. Um, Beyond TJ, Tiffany. Teresa, everybody seems to be fine. Thanks for the thumbs up. Teresa, why is your thumbs up? Is, are you left-handed? Because I, for the first time, realized, oh, this is the first time I saw it, that there are different thumbs, left and right-handed. Is it because um, of left and right-handed people? Because I, that's, this would be first to me as well. Thanks, everybody. I mean, all of you, all good. Thank you. Right, let's go to the next one. We sometimes also, um, we sometimes also, um, buy services and the services need to get from the manufacturer to the customer our service provider replaces the manufacturer our service provider is the company who provides the service like a dentist for instance okay that will be an example of a service provider who deals directly with the customer okay nobody else can do it a hairdresser is another good example yes thank you very much um there's another option as well you can get an agent or a broker involved. For instance, if you um, have um, um, insurance companies, financial financial institutions, um, medical um, discoveries is a good example, for instance. They um, are the service provider and they provide um, insurance plans, um, medical schemes, and all kinds of products. 
something that's not none of them are, um, um, are tangible okay you'll see the debit order goes off whoop, every second or first day of the month but in the money's just gone but you actually get the surety when um, something happens and you need to go for operation or you're in a car crash and you know that you're covered so then you experience the benefit it's often done through agents and i know when 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 medical schemes are involved you, um, they send nurses to you nowadays to your home they take your um um um, you do a sort of a semi-medical um, and they draw blood and it goes off for testing and then um, the rest of the stuff can actually be done um, it can actually be done um, online so to speak but um, sometimes there are brokers involved as well because people do not have the time um, um, and, and I know if, if you're going to make a decision about investments and it's um, big amounts you want to invest a million rand then you're not going to go online and, and do some surfing and then um, decide and then do a transfer. That's not going to happen. You don't have to knowledge. So you want the experts who deal with it on a daily basis and you will contact a, 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 you will have a specific company in mind. That's a service provider. You'll contact them. They will send you um, an expert who represents them. They will sit down. Um, you will tailor make something for your specific needs. Um, and then eventually, if the transaction is, 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 is closed, then you will receive the benefit of that service through the documentation, the policy or the medical scheme that you've signed up for. Right. Retailers. Distribution retailers, for instance. Anybody give me an example of that? Woo Looks as if we're going to get some homework. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody wants to have a go at it? I don't want to do everything today, please. Service providers, distribution channels. Let me rather give you a couple of examples of service providers and then you tell me which one fits in where. Welcome, thank you very much. The airline, for instance, they are a service provider. You don't own the plane, you only buy that ticket um, and you can only use it for that particular time that you had to fly to. Thank you very much, Lebo. Good example. Okay. So the service is provided um, through. Um, a retailer that offers it um, on their behalf. Vodacom um, is, a, is obviously a very good example because they're a service provider, but they all have different um, kiosks and shops uh, throughout different venues um, of the country. Um, and that's where the consumer, you, you know, as a consumer, don't go straight to Vodacom and say, listen, um, I need a new contract. I want to sign up. No, you go through the different retail outlets. Right. We can also finally look at industrial products. Similarly, there are different in different distribution options available. Right? Um, I'll be frank with you. Um, you can read through a textbook um, and look at the different examples. But um, if you're looking for uh, this is not important, uh, this is not important. There's sometimes a conflict within a channel as well. Usually um, when there's a lot of competition um, and it has happened um, that that people um, want to hijack the efforts of others in the in the particular channel um, and, and replacing it and it, it, it with a manufacturer to place that function. Excuse me, <coughs> still haven't got that irritation out of my throat. When the manufacturers are replacing that particular function in the um, in the value chain, um, in the distribution channel, by obtaining their own storage facilities, by obtaining their own um, 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 transport, um, their own trucks uh, to do the physical distribution of the products. It usually is as a result of them wanting to save cost and wanting to be more control of the situation. Um, 
but it could also be because um, the supplier, the intermediary who fulfilled that specific function, um, has just become too expensive. Um, usually, it's the case when there's a, a, more of a monopoly in a particular in, in a particular channel. If there are healthy competition within a particular channel, then that would not really be the case. But that healthy competition within a channel can lead to some conflict within the channel as well between those intermediaries, and this is what the channel conflict specifically refers to. There are some factors that determine the distribution channel design. Um, those different examples for industrial products, for um, services and for tangible products uh, are all examples of um, channel designs. Um, you can read through that again. The four characteristics of the customer, uh, the product itself, the manufacturer and the distribution system are all um, determining factors that will um, determine what particular channel design is required. In, I think, your third year, you do a, a whole semester module um, on services marketing, and we will go into that in, in more detail. Right. There is um, also, I'm going to finish with that today. I think we, our time is almost done. Is our time done? OK, our time is done. Um, I have to rush because I've got to go to another building for, for class. But um, this is the last. Um, there is some homework on the next page that you can, again, the exercise that you can just do for revision. It's not necessarily, it's not based on a case study in your textbook. But I want you to just go through that list that I have on the screen, the different types of wholesalers and retailers, um, and, and familiarize yourself with that. Um, because I've, I've just highlighted some examples that I think we're all familiar with. But you can go through that, um, do that list. Um, again, it might be um, in the form of a short question that um, that we ask you in a test and sell us in, um, um, examples of wholesalers, examples of retailers. Or I'll give you an example and say, is it a retailer, is it a wholesaler? OK. Um, people, I will, um, on Friday morning, just resume with a summary of this chapter, OK? Um, especially the last couple of pages that um, we are um, on at the moment. And then I will also spend time in preparing you for your test next Wednesday. Ah, uh, next Tuesday, sorry. OK. Um, it is an important session. So if you know of anybody who has not attended today, please remind them. But I have posted an announcement in that, um, to that extent on Canvas um, on Monday already. Thanks, everybody. Anybody, any questions at this point? Are we all good? Yes, if you want to put a product in the market, you need to test it. Um, and you would be our products when you graduate, so we want to test it to see if you're ready to go in the market or not. That's why we're doing tests. That's the academic in me talking. The marks for the class test, um, at the moment, it should be ready by Friday as well, Candice. To me, it's not that important at the end of the day, but it is important to um, that, that you know how you did in your test. But uh, it should be ready by um, by Friday, yes. Well, good. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Nice chatting to you guys again. Um, and um, we see each other second period again on Friday. Keep well. Behave yourselves. Um, and then we'll chat again on Friday. There we go. Back up and run to the...